Okay, thank you. Well, first I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here talking about CPs. Um, so the title I chose was just if um, we really understand how CVs form and evolve. And I'll try to convince you that we should answer this question with a big no. I mean, we have some idea <laughs> about how they form and evolve, but um, the very uh, details, uh, I think we still don't know. Um, so first about CV formation, we know uh, they form from a uh, main sequence binary. And then the more massive star in this binary evolves to a red giant, it fills its Roche lobe. And because this red giant is much more massive than the main sequence component, uh, this mass transfer is dynamically unstable, and this leads to common envelope evolution. Um, then the outcome of this common envelope evolution is a closed binary hosting a white dwarf and the main sequence. Uh, this binary is detached and uh, uh, this binary will eventually become a CV. But then uh, at this point of, uh, uh, in this scenario here for the formation, the main uncertainty comes from the, this phase, the common envelope phase. Um, the main uncertainties are the efficiency of converting orbital energy to uh, unbind the envelope. Uh, what source of energy we have, we have to help this, uh, uh, the envelope ejection, and also what are the conditions required to have this dynamically unstable mass transfer. Uh, this was partially addressed uh, yesterday by Kilik Stock, and we also today by Monica and Peter Scherbach. So, I'll just leave this uncertainty for them. Um, so after we have the formation of this uh, pre-CV, because of orbital angular momentum loss, this pre-CV will become a CV. Uh, so the main sequence will fill its Roche lobe, and then uh, we have the onset of mass transfer. Uh, so we can turn to CV evolution uh, to this point. So CV evolution is something that it seems we understand because this has been studied for decades. So uh, it's quite well studied topic. And uh, so it might look boring uh, uh, because of this. So the basic understanding we have about how a CV evolves. Um, <clears throat> so if the main sequence uh, is partially convective, uh, the dominant orbital angular momentum loss mechanism will be magnetic braking, which is indicated in red in this plot. Um, but then uh, as the main sequence is losing mass, it will eventually become a fully convective star. Uh, at this point, we believe that magnetic braking gets disrupted. So this means that magnetic braking uh, will be much weaker than before. Um, so, uh, after this point, then we only have emission of gravitational wave, uh, which is indicated in blue. Um, and at some point, as the main sequence before became fully convective, at some point uh, it will become a brown dwarf because it cannot sustain hydrogen burning anymore. Uh, then, at this point, the, the CV is called period bouncer because it's bouncing here, and the donor is a brown dwarf. Uh, so the, the orbital period is not sure, uh, decreasing anymore, but it's increasing uh, in response to mass loss. Uh, uh, so the key to understand uh, CV evolution uh, is orbital uh, angular momentum loss. This is the key aspect. So, uh, as I mentioned, this seems uh, uh, boring because it seems we understand, but in reality, uh, we have several problems. Uh, for example, uh, when we compare the space density, uh, the predicted one with the observed one, then we know uh, also for decades that the simulations predict much more CVs than are observed. Uh, so this is a 
a long time problem. Um, the other problem uh, with this, this picture I mentioned um, is about this, uh, the period that this transition occurs from a star to a brown dwarf. Um, this uh, line here indicates the observational or, or minimum orbital period, mm -hmm. and the predicted is much shorter than uh, the observed. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> the third problem we have uh, is when we compare the predicted uh, orbital period distribution with the observed one. Uh, the observed one is the red one with the CVs from the slow one. Um, and then we have in gray the population centers. So we see that we predict much more systems below the gap than it's observed, uh, even if we somehow move this to, to the correct uh, minimum orbital period. Uh, period. Uh, we still predict much more uh, CVs below the gap. Uh, then we observe. Um, and the fourth problem I would mention is this uh, is scatter in this mass transfer rate for the CVs below the gap. Uh, this are, is a, pl a plot from Anna's paper. And the points indicate the mass transfer rate and the colors, the white dwarf mass. As you can see, uh, we have this scatter that is goes in the opposite direction of the prediction. Uh, and also the mass transfer rates are, are uh, higher uh, in the observations than uh, we predict with gravitational uh, radiation alone. Uh, this also happens for the CVs above the gap. So here I simulated three uh, different magnetic breaking prescriptions, and I added uh, on us uh, mass transfer rates from observation. Um, then you can see that some prescriptions can explain the systems with intermediate uh, mass transfer rates. Uh, but then there's these two systems here. Uh, they have very different mass transfer rates. So it's uh, it seems uh, very difficult to explain them with only magnetic breaking. So it's, um, I would say clearly something is missing here. Um, okay, if we look at the pure bouncer population, just this population, um, we also have two problems, main problems. Uh, one is the fraction of the systems that we predict uh, I mean, the best simulation we predict is something like 40%, but typically this number gets as high as 80 to 90%. But in the observations, we have only 14%. So uh, we are predicting that most CVs should be pure bouncers. Um, and the other problem is again the mass transfer rates that are inferred from observations. Uh, again, I'm using the ANAS data, uh, and you can see that the mass transfer rates are much higher than predicted, and also the trend, um, how we expect it to evolve with the period is different. Uh, so this is definitely a problem. And the final problem I would like to mention uh, is the white dwarf mass distribution. Um, so from the observations, we have that most of them have masses uh, greater than 0 0.6, uh, but in the prediction, in the model, the, the population model, we have quite the opposite. So most have masses below this. So this is definitely not consistent with observations. And, and this can be used as a constraint as well. Um, so, I mentioned a few problems, there are more actually, <laughs> but uh, uh, we can start thinking about what is we need to solve them. Um, well, as I mentioned, the key to understand CV evolution is the orbital angular momentum loss. So, these problems are likely connected with uh, the mechanism extracting uh, orbital angular momentum from the CVs. 
So it wouldn't be surprised if we need to uh, readdress this mechanism, like to understand better the physics uh, associated with them. Um, uh, but just a quick note that uh, something we should never forget uh, is about the bias in the sample, because it's quite important if we are comparing uh, uh, population synthesis model with observations we need to take into account the selection effects, but then, uh, well, ideally, we need a sample that is as large, complete, and unbiased as possible. And uh, Anna will talk about how to beat such a sample, <laughs> which is quite important for us to properly compare. Um, so, um, so coming back to the uh, mechanism for orbital angular momentum loss. Uh, so the easiest one is gravitational uh, wave radiation, uh, gravitational radiation, but I think we, we don't have to do anything about this. Um, and then there's magnetic breaking uh, that is poorly constrained. Uh, well, we don't know how strong it should be, how it should depend uh, on the properties of the donor, like mass, radius, um, convective envelope, the core, the magnetic field. Um, also, if it, if it changes during the, the CD evolution, like when it becomes a fully convective star, does it change? Uh, when it becomes a brown dwarf, so we still have magnetic breaking. Or even if we consider more massive stars, like uh, if we have a solar mass star, so it will evolve um, to a subgiant and then a red giant. So how magnetic breaking depends on the evolutionary state uh, of the star. Uh, and there's also this one, consequential angular momentum loss, which is a consequence of the mass transfer process. Um, this is also expected to be important uh, in the past years, but uh, we don't know actually what is the <laughs> what should be the dominant mechanism uh, uh, operating in CVs like do circumbinary disk matter or maybe the interaction between the nova ejecta with the donor or winds from accretion disk or the mass loss from the CV. So. Uh, we have several models, but we don't really know uh, which one of them is the dominant, or if it, we need to have all of them combined to explain the observations. Um, um, but there's light in the end of the tunnel. Um, for example, um, the, uh, Kinnig et al. showed in uh, 2011 that we can solve the orbital period minimum problem uh, if we have additional angular momentum loss below the gap. So the solution to explain this is uh, to have this extra angular momentum loss. But the problem is that we don't know what is the mechanism. I mean, thinking about physics, what should be responsible for this additional uh, angular momentum? loss. Uh, we can also think about these, the problem with these other free observables. And this is an idea by Matthias and collaborators in 2016 that they proposed that the uh, if consequential angular momentum has this dependence with the white dwarf mass, um, then these problems could be solved or at least alleviate it somehow. Yeah. And this is really the case. Uh, for example, when we apply this model and compare the space density above, we can see that we are predicting much less systems now with this model, uh, but we still predict more than observe. Uh, the white dwarf mass distribution uh, is also improved, but we are still missing some systems here. Um, with a very low mass CO white dwarfs and even some potential helium white dwarfs here. Um, and also with respect to the 
the orbital period distribution, we have an improvement as well. Um, but again, we are having uh, predicting much more systems below the gap than is observed. Um, and this can be, of course, because of observational bias. And I think there will be a talk by Lee about how to find the systems, uh, because it's, it's likely that this uh, could be improved if we have uh, more systems in the observed sample, but I don't think this will solve the problem. Uh, so this model helps, but we need to improve it. Uh, the problem is that we don't know what should be uh, the physical mechanism leading to such a dependence or something similar to this. Uh, so, uh, so after all this, what I can say is that we need to better understand both magnetic breaking and also the mechanism behind the consequential angular momentum loss. Um, among these two, uh, between these two, I think the magnetic breaking could be uh, considered easier to be constrained because we don't need to have a mass transfer or an interacting binary for uh, constraining this mechanism. Uh, so we can even think that um, a non-interacting binary or even single star would be uh, better targets to constrain magnetic breaking. Um, um, this um, was done this year for the main sequence binaries uh, by El Bad and collaborators. Uh, he will talk after me, just after me. So he will explain this, <laughs> hopefully. But what is important from uh, this work is that they showed that so that a magnetic breaking prescription uh, similar to this uh, can better explain the main sequence, main sequence binaries. Um, so um, this is quite important because even though we apparently cannot constrain the uh, strength of the magnetic break, and at least the shape, we uh, this is uh, actually um, is strongly suggesting that uh, magnetic saturation is something real. Um, so we can apply this sort of dependence to the pre-CVs. Um, using these results uh, by Schreiber and collaborators 2010, uh, in which they show that the fraction of pre-CVs with respect to all white dwarf main sequence binaries, uh, it drops a lot uh, if you consider, let's say, the mass of the main sequence 0.2 uh, up to 0.5, then it drops a lot. Uh, so, uh, this drop corresponds to like eight to nine percent. So uh, this reduction is kind of suggesting that magnetic breaking should be indeed disrupted uh, for fully convective main sequence star, which are, are this one here, below 0 0.3, 0 0.35. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so what it did was to use the same expression that were used for the main sequence binaries. Uh, but then we introduced these two parameters, the K, that we are multiplying this prescription just to see how strong we need it to be uh, to explain the preceded. Uh, and also dividing by this eta uh, for the fully convective stars, uh, because we need to have a weaker magnetic break in this regime. Um, so here I'm showing the same as the observational plot, but normalized to one uh, to better compare with the models. Uh, the blue curve above is indicating that this prescription as it, as it is uh, cannot explain this. We need something stronger. So I'm showing here for K equal, uh, equals to 50, and then we can uh, indeed explain this drop of systems. Uh, but we still need to have uh, the weak magnetic breaking for 
the fully convective stars. So just sentence. <laughs> so basically, that's the combination we have to explain. Um, then I start the summary. Um, so we know that CDs uh, are driven by orbital environmental loss, but we don't really uh, know, like in very detail, um, um, a lot of missing ingredients. Um, so these problems, uh, they are likely connected with the poor understanding we have about magnetic breaking and also this consequential angular momentum loss. Um, and despite this progress we have uh, for this like more mathematical way uh, of addressing this, um, we need to, to, to think about them uh, from a point of view of physics. I mean, we should not forget about the physics because otherwise we cannot progress like to improve any model if we don't know the physics. Um, so uh, this magnetic breaking proportional to the spin of the star uh, can explain not only the uh, main sequence binaries, but also the pre-CVs, but uh, it needs to be stronger uh, and also weaker for fully convective stars. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diogo. Questions? Is it on? Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the interesting talk. Um, earlier you showed a figure showing the white dwarf masses um, theory versus observation with the additional angular momentum loss prescription. Um, so I, this, this question is maybe difficult to answer, but I just thought I was wondering, yeah, yeah thanks. If you can comment on maybe what's happening, like what's killing off the white dwarfs at the lower mass end in the models? I mean, do you know what, what kind of evolutionary channel they might be? Yeah, yeah, because you see, this is the dependence. So for low mass white dwarf, then this gets really strong. And, okay, uh, so th then the stability criterion to define if it's dynamically stable or not at the onset of mass transfer for the CV, then this dependence kills. Uh, all of them here. But it's quite, it's quite a sharp. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. That's why I think it needs improvement because if, uh, I mean, if you know the physics behind this dependence, then we can play. Because uh, this is too sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Monica? Yeah, it's more a comment to regard this to the question uh, that uh, this 0.35 divided by white dwarf was purely empirical, so based to feed the data. But the physics behind this might be the friction of the nova eruption because nova eruption is usually supposed to not exert too much friction because it's small uh, amount of material and at large velocities. But if you have low mass white dwarfs, they eject more material in the novas, and also the velocity of the ejector is much slower when you have a low mass white dwarf. So that's kind of the possible physical reason behind. But uh, when we fitted this 0.35, there were no uh, systems below 0.5 observed. Now in the so it's still it's empirical, so it will not fit with new data. Always good, but it's kind of an idea. Actually, can I say something really quick? So when we did our NOVA calculations for a 0.6 solar mass white dwarf, it doesn't actually make a wind at all. It only makes an envelope. And so the frictional angular momentum loss during that for, for a low mass white dwarf, it's going to be much larger for, um, than higher mass. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just curious if you could uh, complete the cycle. You, you updated your mag magnetic breaking prescription based on main sequence stars and pre-CVs. So if you apply that to the CVs, does it actually solve the problems that you pointed out? No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> but this would be the next step here. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it will help. 
but uh, the problem with the CVs is that we, because we have the mass transfer, so yeah. So we need to consider also this angular momentum loss because of the mass transfer. So we have an additional uh, degree of freedom, let's say, in the fitting or the modeling. I, I think it might help for the period minimum, uh, maybe, or the mass transfer rate below the gap. But above the gap, that wouldn't fit, right? Yeah, this part, for example. This part doesn't help. Yeah. The, um, this is the prescription see? Um, that works for the main sequence binaries, but then it's too weak. It's somehow uh, strong enough to explain the, the mass transfer rate here, but it's too weak because you see there's virtually no gap here. So this model as it is predicts that there's no gap. So <laughs> you, wouldn't, you would see uh, the CVs all over the the orbital period distribution. Thank you, Diogo, for the talk. Uh, actually, I had the impression from your previous talks that you solved all the problems, but now I see that you didn't. <laughs> uh, that was my goal. Uh, I think we see a pretty good evidence that, at least in Novalix, there is a outflow of the material from the L2 point, and it probably forms a second binary uh, disk, something like that, but uh, that still in excludes the dwarf nova, the large fraction of dwarf nova, so I yeah. don't know if it helps or not. But uh, we see it in different type of nova like this, this outflow. Thank you. Yeah. More questions, comments? If not, uh, thank you, Diogo.